Hi everyone. Welcome to this exciting session by Simply Learn. Today we have a really interesting topic for you. In this video, we'll be discussing conditional probability, which is one of the most important areas in probability theory. We'll start by talking about random experiments and then move on to events and sample space. Then we'll try to understand the multiplication rule with the help of an example. After that, we'll learn about dependent events and the multiplication rule associated with them. After that, we learn about conditional probability with the help of an example. So, let's get started. What is a random experiment? Let's say that you roll a fair die and there are six possible outcomes. You can get a number from 1 to 6, but it is impossible to accurately predict the outcome. In mathematical theory, we consider only those experiments or observations for which we know the set of possible outcomes. Also, it is important that predicting a particular outcome is impossible. Such an experiment, where we know the set of all the possible results, but find it impossible to predict any one particular execution is a random experiment. Even if a random experiment is repeated under identical conditions, the outcomes or results will fluctuate randomly. Sample space and events. The sample space associated with a random experiment is the set of all the possible outcomes. Suppose you roll a die. So the sample space for a single throw of die will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. An event is a subset of the sample space or you can say it is an outcome of a random experiment. Getting a heads when we toss a coin is an event. Now we will discuss about the multiplication rule in probability. The multiplication rule says that when two events are independent, the probability of both occurring simultaneously is given by probability of A intersection B will be equal to probability of A into probability of B. Let's understand this with the help of an example. If a coin is tossed twice, what will be the probability of getting two heads? So, in a single throw, the probability of getting a head is 1 by 2, that is 0.5. So, the probability of getting the two heads in both the coins will be 0.5 into 0.5 which is equal to 0 0.25. Let's look at another example. Suppose a coin is flipped and a die is rolled in the same time. So, what will be the probability of getting a head on the coin and 4 on the dice? So, the probability of getting a heads as discussed in the previous example will be is equal to 0.5 and the probability of getting a 4 on a single throw of die will be 1 by 6 since there are 6 sample space and 1 favorable outcome. So, the probability of getting a head on a coin and 4 on a die will be is equal to 0 0.5 into 0 0.16 which will come out to be 0 0.80. Now, let's move on to dependent events. Two events are said to be dependent if the outcome of the first event affects the outcome of the second event so that the probability is changed. Let's understand this with the help of an example. Suppose you have a deck of cards. The probability of drawing a card from a deck of cards is 1 by 52. Now, if you do not replace the card, the probability of drawing another card changes to 1 by 51. Another example of it can be parking at a no parking zone and getting a ticket. When you park at a no parking zone, the probability of getting a ticket increases. There is a multiplication rule associated with the dependent events. It says that when the two events are dependent, the probability of both occurring is given by this formula, which is P A intersection B is equal to probability of A into probability of B slash A. The slash reads the probability that B occurs given that A has already occurred. Let's look at an example. Three cards are drawn from a deck and are not replaced. What will be the probability of getting three jacks? So in this case, the probability of getting a jack out of 52 cards in the first draw will be 4 by 52. Now after we have drawn the first card, there are 51 cards left. The probability of getting a jack in a second and third draw will be 3 by 51 and 2 by 50 respectively. So according to the formula, the probability of getting the 3 jacks will be P 0.76 into 0.058 into 0.04 which will come out to be 0 0.00176. Now that we know all the basic concepts in probability theory, we'll move on to conditional probability. Let A and B be the two events associated with a random experiment. Then the probability of A's occurrence under the condition that B has already occurred is called the conditional probability. It is denoted by P A slash B. Thus, we have P A slash B is equal to P A intersection B divided by P of B. P A slash B is read as probability of occurrence of A given that B has already occurred. Similarly, P B slash A can be called as probability of occurrence of B given that A has already occurred. Let's look at an example. 
In the recent study, it was found that the probability of a randomly selected student is a girl is 0.51 and is a girl and plays sports is 0.10. So if the student is a female, what is the probability that she plays sports? In this case, the probability that a student is female and plays sport is 0.1 and the probability that a student is female is 0.51. So the probability that a student plays a sport given that she is a female will be 0.1 divided by 0.51 which will come out to be 0.1961. Now we are done with the, all the theories related to conditional probability. We'll move on to the demo in Excel. Let's look at the problem statement. Suppose there are a group of 100 buyers out of which 70 purchase football and 40 purchase hockey. However, there are 20 buyers who purchase both football and hockey. Determine the probability that a randomly chosen buyer has purchased football given that he also purchased hockey. So, this is a clear example of a conditional probability. Let's fill in this table. So the probability of purchasing a football is 0 0.70 and that of hockey is 0 0.40. It is also given that there are 20 buyers who have purchased both football and hockey. So 0 0.20 is the probability of PA intersection B. Now if you remember the formula of the conditional probability, the A slash B is equal to PA intersection B divided by P of B where P A intersection B is the probability of occurrence of both A and B. P B is the probability of occurrence of B. So we have all the values, let's put in. So this will be equal to, this is cell E7. So we will divide the cell E7 by cell E6. Which will come out to be 0 0.5. So, the probability that a randomly chosen buyer has purchased football given that he also purchased hockey is 0 0.5. With this, we have come to the end of this condition probability tutorial. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please put them in the comment section. Also, if you like the video, please subscribe to the Simply Learn channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update. Thank you for watching and keep learning. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.